Hello, my name is AlgoTrade Pro. I am a professional trader specialized in algorithmic trading and in this series I will be taking you step by step through the whole process of creating a profitable trading strategy. I will share with you exclusive information that you will not find in any other video. So, if you are ready to take your trading game to the next level and start making consistent profits in the markets, join us on this exciting journey. In the first episode of this series, we covered all the fundamentals for creating a profitable and efficient trading strategy. We talked about risk management, backtesting, data samples and we finished the episode by testing and choosing a consistent confirmation indicator, which will be the foundation of our strategy. If you haven't seen that episode, it's not worth watching this one right now, because you will not understand it. Go watch the first episode and then move on to this one. The link is in the description of this video. For those who have already seen the first episode, grab a pen and a paper to take notes, because in this episode I will share with you another fundamental part of our trading system, which is the choice of a filter indicator. Before that, I will just do a brief recap of what we already know that I'm going to use in my strategy. Therefore, my strategy will be for the 2 hour time frame. I will apply it in the cryptocurrency market and for now these are the cryptos that I chose to carry out the backtests. My risk management will be done using the ATR indicator with the default settings and my confirmation indicator will be the KQE MT4 with the settings 14, 5 and 4.238. For more details check out the first episode of this series. Let's now talk about the filter indicator. A filter indicator, which can also be called a secondary confirmation indicator, is an indicator that has the simple purpose of eliminating false and losing signals given by our confirmation indicator. So, what are the qualities of a good filter indicator? It is an indicator that provides us with information about the major trend present in the markets. It is an indicator that should eliminate the largest number of false and losing signals given by the confirmation indicator while maintaining the profitable entry signals. It can be a zero cross indicator, for example the rate of change, a two lines cross indicator, like the Arun, or a chart indicator, like the super trend. But usually we should look for an indicator that works differently than our confirmation indicator. In my case, as the KQE MT4, which is my confirmation indicator, is a two lines cross indicator, I will give preference to zero cross or chart indicators. This is so that our final trading system is as efficient and diversified as possible. Of course, this is my advice based on my knowledge and experience, so you can do it as you wish. And how do you know which one is the best for your strategy? It's quite simple, we just have to backtest as many filter indicators as possible. And the selection process is exactly the same as the one used for choosing the confirmation indicator. As such, we will do a lot of backtests on our in-sample data, where we will choose the three best filter indicators that increased the win rate of our system the most to carry out the backtests on the hour of sample data. After that, we will know which one is the most consistent and if it is necessary to carry out some kind of optimization. As in the other episode, I'm going to do all these backtests to choose my filter indicator and I will show you the whole process. If you are enjoying this series where I am and will continue to show you everything you need to know without secrets or false information in order to you create your dream trading strategy, don't forget to subscribe, share and like this video. Thank you very much for your incredible support and without further ado, let's run the in-sample backtests.
Here are all the results. As you could see through some clips I was showing, I used my backtesting bot to help me. But everything I did, you can also do manually. I tested about 25 different filter indicators and put them in this table to compare them. Here there is no specific number of indicators to test, but the more you test, the better, as you increase the probability of finding good indicators. As we can see, my top 3 filter indicators that most increased the win rate of my strategy were the half trend, the coral trend and the end trend price DPO. Note that depending on the change in the sample, risk management, timeframes or markets, the performance of the indicators can change completely. So don't be guided by my results if you are going to create a strategy different from mine. Now to find which one out of these three indicators is the most consistent, I'm going to apply them to my out of sample data. I will do it again using my backtesting bot and I will be right back. And here we have the results of both samples of the three best tested filter indicators side by side. As I mentioned in the first episode, the difference between samples should not be greater than 15 to 20%. And by that way, you can see that the three indicators show consistent results. But the difference in the net profit of the half trend indicator samples compared to the other two is greater. And as such, we will discard that filter indicator. Regarding the coral trend and the DPO indicators, based on this statistic, it is difficult to say which one is better. Of course, you could say that the coral trend statistic is slightly better. But in these situations, I prefer to go deeper into the statistic of each indicator, because only then I will make a confident decision. As such, I will create an Excel for each of them with more statistical data, including the equity chart with all the trades. And, perhaps, in this way, we will be able to verify which is the best filter indicator for the strategy. Before that, take note that if the difference between samples of the three indicators were greater than 20%, we would have to choose the best one and optimize its settings, in order to make it more consistent. Let's now create an Excel with all the traits of the two samples of each filter indicator. Again, I'm going to use a program that will handle this for me automatically, but you can do everything I will do 100% manually. To automate the process of collecting the data of all trades with statistical information, you will need to have the TradingView Pro plan. By the way, if you want to get a free $30 to use in TradingView, use the link in the description of this video. Then, you should click on the button that says Strategy Tester, then on the list of trades button and finally press this icon that says export data and you will do all of this for every asset you want to test in my case i will do this for the seven cryptos i have chosen and i will do this process two times one for the strategy with a coral trend filter indicator and the other one for the strategy with a dpo filter indicator after having all the Excel documents with the information on all the trades of each asset, we just have to put everything together. And here it is. This is all the statistical information about the strategy that uses the coral trend as a filter indicator and on this side is all the statistical information about the strategy that uses the untrained price DPO. Note that the application conditions of each strategy are exactly the same including the risk used in these simulations, which was 2% per signal in a bankroll with $10,000. I remind you that I am not yet considering commissions and swaps. That will only be done when I have my strategy fully set up. Firstly, we can see that both equity curves are pretty consistent, so we need to dig deeper to find variations between the two strategies. Regarding the win rate, they are practically identical, as we already knew, Regarding the average risk-reward ratio, it is also identical. The profit factor is exactly the same. And there are no big differences regarding the drawdowns either. 
the strategy with the DPO may have a slightly bigger drawdown, but it also has more traits. Even calculating the sharp ratio, we can see that the difference is not big. But there is a ratio that has a big variation, which is the return over max drawdown ratio. For those who don't know, return over max drawdown ratio is a risk-adjusted return metric used as an alternative to the sharp ratio and it is calculated by dividing the average annual return by the max drawdown. Usually, a good strategy has a value greater than 2 in this ratio. And, as we can see, the strategy with a coral trend has a value of 1.94 in this ratio, while the strategy with a DPO has a value of 2.79. As such, the untrained price DPO indicator shows us that it is more efficient and, therefore, will be the filter indicator on my crypto strategy. If you want, you can have access to this Excel which has a statistical analysis of more than 9000 trades. In it, you will also find a sheet to perform Monte Carlo simulations automatically. To know more about it, assess the links in the description. In this way, for now, our strategy is formed by the QQEM T4, the untrained price DPO and the ATR indicators. I could try to optimize the DPO indicator even more, but since the results of the samples were similar, I will not do it so that the results don't become overfitted. I will only do so if necessary in future episodes. And so ends today's episode. Next week, we will address another type of indicator that will increase even more the efficiency of our strategy. And I will again perform several backtests with my samples and I will show you the whole process. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any episodes. I hope you enjoyed it and above all that you learned something new. And I wish the best of luck to those who are going to start their backtests on filter indicators. If you want to speed up that process, you can access my backtesting bots, which can backtest thousands of trades in a few seconds. For more information, check the links in the description. I look forward to receiving your feedback. You can do it through the comments here on YouTube or through the public Discord group. I will be waiting. And that's it. Don't forget to subscribe share and like this video to support me in bringing more content to you. Be well, thank you, bye bye.